Hey y'all, it's Laura and I am back with another Cocoa Vanilla Studio video and this time around we are playing with the Happiness Collection which is one of the older collections, one that has been in my stash for a while and one that I fully admit to have been doing a little bit of hoarding <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't get a lot of this one when it first came out and this was before I became part of the design team so I still don't have a lot of it but I absolutely love this collection and the colors were too perfect for these photos of a beautiful tulip magnolia tree it's a Japanese tulip magnolia tree that was on campus at the college I attend and it went into full bloom two days after a massive ice storm near my house. And that's only an hour away. It wasn't that far away. And yet, such a massive difference in temperature and in weather during that time period. So I have this beautiful painty looking background that I've cut right down the center. I will tell you this is tricky. I love this diagonal design and I have used it quite a lot in the past, but it is always so tricky to get this to cut perfectly straight from one corner to the other because my paper trimmer is literally 12 inches. It doesn't do any further. And corner to corner like that diagonally is longer than 12 inches. So just like the way they measure televisions, not always width wise or vertically, it's usually diagonally, it, uh, it, it counts a little bit different. It counts a little bit different. So it's a little bit tricky to cut. And so I use my beautiful T-square ruler and I go one direction with it and then I turn it around and go the other direction and where it meets in the middle, that's where we cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's rarely perfect, but we're going to cover up that seam anyway, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. Now, these photos are a variety of things here. So I've got the, the whole tree in one picture, but the largest photo is a square photo, 4x4 photo, of the actual blooms on this tree because they were so beautiful. They kind of look like, I mean, they look like tulips, obviously, but they kind of look like those flowers on lily pads. You know that like cup around the top of the leaves? That's what they look like and they're just stunning. And the color was like this fuchsia pink. Oh, loved it. But look at how perfectly this beautiful tree matches the colors in this collection. It, it was made to be, it was meant to be. It was made for this particular paper, we had to use it. And then I just have a very simple blue cardstock background. Now I have had people ask in the past, I do tend to use uh, basil cardstock personally. Uh, I just like the weight of it a lot better. And so I'm just using a little bit of the gorgeous painty happiness and then that navy blue to kind of offset the kind of crazy painty painter look at the bottom and uh, gives your eye a place to rest on the page. So for these photos, I have matted the center photo with a darker color and then gone with a lighter color for the outside photos and just a very light matte. I didn't go heavy with the layering behind this one or anything like that because it doesn't need it. When you have three photos on a page, I don't feel the need to go crazy with multiple layers behind that photo because they're going to stand out anyway. And also being located here as it is on the center line of the layout, it's going to draw a lot of attention to itself anyway. Now here is where I really wanted to play. These are frames from the Happiness Collection and I decided to go ahead and cut one in half, diagonally of course, and that way I can stair step them with my photos and add in some little extra designs and I was thinking probably cut aparts would be tucked underneath of there and that's exactly what I ended up doing. I really like using cut aparts. I think they're a great opportunity to stretch your embellishments a little bit and so that's where I started. I'm just making sure I like the way that, that looks before I go and continue to add layers to these frames. And this is probably the most layering that I ended up doing on this page is just with these frames. I wanted one of them to be this little wreath that had the little lines that you could journal and then I wanted to have a little word phrase at the bottom. So I'm just playing around with the different sizes of the cut aparts. Now this small one here that I have pulled out is from the, uh, I think it's an A5 paper stack and it is 
beautiful. It is so lovely. It fit perfectly into this frame, so I was pretty happy about that. Now, I am going to go ahead and tape all of this down and then start playing with some florals because, of course, I'm bringing florals. Literally scrapping pictures of a beautiful floral-filled tree. You knew florals were going to have to go onto this page, too. So this is a pretty simple design overall. It's just a half and half. There is a beautiful uh, seam that runs down the center that is a great place to stack your photos. And this is a design that I have used fairly often and really enjoy. I think it's a great way to take on the diagonal design in a very linear way so that you have this base, this foundation that you're following in that diagonal flow. And it's just a really fun stair step way to add your photos. It's also a great way to get a lot of photos onto a page without feeling like you're over overwhelming the page. So I have a 4x4 photo and two 3x4 photos on this page, and it doesn't in any way feel overwhelmed. Now I did decide to play with the titles a little bit, but I don't end up using these mostly because there was a couple of other things I wanted to use instead, and I didn't want the title to overpower my photos, and I felt like this these titles were a little bit too big, and they were taking a little bit too much attention away. So here is the second cut apart piece that I had found in the stack of cut aparts that I kept with this collection, because I do pre-cut out my cut aparts, and I fussy cut any pages that I, I know that I'm gonna want, things like florals and butterflies and icons and full words. If there's the great big words I could use as titles, I will fussy cut those too. And having those ready to go when I'm scrapping really helps a lot with my scrapbooking, I find. It makes it so much easier for me to sit down and be creative when everything is just ready to go. So every time I get a new collection in, particularly with Cocoa Vanilla, because there's often a lot of pieces that I want to fussy cut for Cocoa Vanilla collections, I do sit down and and fussy cut them out ahead of time. And I find that just so much easier when I sit down to scrap and find all of these beautiful bits and pieces ready to go. So now I'm dipping into the ephemera pack and I found this lovely phrase, which was a bit smaller than in the die cut titles. And that worked a little bit better for me. I do play around with this half of a frame. So it looks like there was a frame that I had used previously for another layout and had just the other half of the frames behind. And I will bring that back and use that as well. Considered a couple of options here and there, but let's face it, we all knew I was going to go back to the florals because that is just my happy place. Florals just make me happy. I do love love these little dangling uh, tassels, but they were getting lost in that background. You really couldn't see them. And so I wanted something that was going to stand out a little bit more. So here is that frame piece. I have gone ahead and cut it in half. And so now I have two uh, photo corners. And I'm showing you a couple different ways that you could use them. You could go opposite corners if you wanted to. You could tuck them behind the top and the bottom photo like this. I believe I ended up using them at the corners where the seams of the two halves of the paper run to frame out the layout there. And here are the florals. Again, with the florals, I probably have done some fussy cutting on these, potentially. I don't actually remember if I fussy cut these or if they came like this, but they are stunning, like a watercolor floral. And so I cut this swag in half so that it would fit on the corner side over here in between these two photos and then tucked in a little yellow piece to cover up the seam. And then I'm gonna do the same thing underneath of that lovely. And so I will have two main clusters on this page using a sort of diagonal flow to match my diagonal layouts. Instead of using three large clusters, which which is very common. I'm only using two, so you don't have to use three. Having three photos mean that I didn't really need to have three clusters as well, particularly because they are stacked on top of each other here. So I'm just building up a little base behind my title, which is gonna look really nice and give a little bit more of a pop to that area of the layout. This also kind of fills in that gap because as you can see, I have the two frames filling in a gap in the stair step of the photos. And so the opposite two corners needed a little something to fill in that gap. And so it just feels more cohesive from top to bottom when those gaps are filled in in similar ways. So I have florals on one side on the left, florals on the right, and then I have the frames at the top and the bottom. And so they're mirroring each other across the page. And that worked out quite nicely. Now I will say that going to school has been an interesting experience for me. I am 38 
and going back to school to finish my bachelor's degree after 20 years of starting it and walking away and working on it a bit more 10 years ago and now I'm finishing up. I'm in my last semester and I'm extremely excited to be done, but it's also been a very interesting experience to be on a college campus again, and especially one that is a full university and not just the community college that I attended before. It's a very different experience, a very different atmosphere, and it has been a huge, huge impact on me, I have to admit. It has been very impactful. And I would encourage you, even if you did not attend college, I would encourage you to go check one out. Just walk on the campus and experience it. When they have their little tour days, or if there's a football game or something like that, I would encourage you to, to go and, and check it out because the campus has a very interesting feel to it. It just, you just feel a little like you're in your own world, like the rest of the world doesn't exist. And it's fascinating to me. And on my campus in particular, there are beautiful, beautiful trees and there's great little sitting areas and gardens and like hideaway places for studying. And it's just been a really, really interesting experience and something that I'm glad I'm getting the opportunity to experience now, even though it's a bit later than I intended to finish this degree. Now I'm finishing off with these teeny teeny tiny little florals that I absolutely fussy cut from a 6x8 or a 5 piece of paper and absolutely love to use for scattering. I think these pop so perfectly on that navy cardstock. They just look so good, like they're bursting out of those big florals and I think that adds so much to this page. Again, keeping my embellishing fairly simple but bursts of complicated. So those florals add that complicated edge to it, but they also have the simple frames. So you get a good balance of both on this page. Finishing up with my scattering and splattering. For the scattering, of course, I use those teeny tiny florals. For my splattering, I use Gold Nouveau and Ink Spray. And that's about it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and also my messy hands. But until next time, bye y'all.